Hello, I'm Monsignor Jim Lasanti. Today on Personally Speaking, I'll be joined by Tony-nominated actor Josh Young. Josh is best known for appearing on Broadway as Judas in the revival of Jesus Christ Superstar. Please stay with us. Welcome to Personally Speaking. I'm your host, Monsignor Jim Lasanti. And Tony-nominated actor Josh Young joins me now. Josh made his Broadway debut as Judas in Jesus Christ Superstar, which earned him a Tony nomination for Best Featured Actor in a Musical. And he originated the role of John Newton in Amazing Grace, also on Broadway. He also performed in the national tour of Les Miserables and the international tour of West Side Story, performing as Tony. Josh has a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in musical theater from Syracuse University. He's married to an actress, Emily Padgett, and last year they welcomed a daughter named Adele. Last fall, Josh joined the faculty of Oakland University in Rochester, Michigan, and as assistant professor at the University School of Music, Theater, and Dance. He's here with us today to talk about his life, his career, his marriage, his family, and the values that sustain him. Joining me now, I'm so pleased to welcome to Personally Speaking, the great actor, the great singer, Josh Young. Josh Young is our guest. Josh, thanks so much for being on Personally Speaking, and uh, let's talk about your life, your acting, your singing, and now your new work in education. Um, I I had the opportunity for our listeners around the country to see Josh Young on Broadway stage twice, one in which he played Judas, another in which he played John Newton in Amazing Grace. So, Josh, let me start there. When you took on the role of Judas, we had a, a guest a few years ago, Jonathan Shack who had played the role of Judas in the movie of, of Judas's life on TV. Did you know no. anything about Judas, and, and what did you bring to the role? Um, I didn't much about Judas at all. Um, at that point, I hadn't read the New Testament because I'm Jewish, and I just had no, I had no right. uh, background <laughs> in, in him at all. So I did just tons of research. I read everything that I could. I read a very obscure um, um, gospel called the Gospel According to Judas, which I, I don't know if it was real or not. Um, but there's there's tons of tons of um, uh, of resources about about Judas's life, and you know it's hard to say what is fact and what is fiction. But I took I took what I thought would be most interesting dramatically and added that. I wanted to ask you too. When, when you uh, starred on Amaz- in Amazing Grace on Broadway and told the story of John Newton, um, what did you know of him, and, and what did you learn? Um, you know, again, John Newton, I knew absolutely nothing about. Uh, everything I learned about him, I had to <laughs> read. Um, but I'll, I mean, I could, t- I could tell you everything I learned was, was there's lots of um, um, biographies written on, on John Newton. And... Um, what I learned was that he was a horrible, terrible man growing up. He was a slave ship captain, uh, and he was terrible to his slaves. And he's a man who, uh, repented and eventually found God and became an ordained minister and wrote amazing grace. So the, the story, his story of redemption is, I mean, I mean, it's meant for a Broadway stage. It's, it's just an incredible story of redemption. Well, let's talk about you as an actor then. First of all, going back to Judas, for I think almost every listener to our show would have somewhere along the line have, have either heard the soundtrack or seen perform Jesus Christ Superstar. But the role of Judas has to be uh, one of the toughest, both vocally, emotionally, and in terms of acting skills. How night after night did Josh Young put out his best as Judas when it is one taxing role? Um, it really came down to saving up everything I had during the day. I, I really lived kind of like a monk, um, because it is, I think one of the most taxing roles physically and vocally, um, that's ever been written. So, um, when I wasn't performing on stage, I, I mean, I did the show on and off for two years, it started at the Stratford Shakespeare festival, uh, in, uh, in uh, Stratford, Ontario. And then, it transferred to the La Jolla Playhouse in, in uh, San Diego. And then it finally made it to Broadway. And by that time, I'd been doing it for about a year and a half, and then I did it for 
few months on Broadway. And um, I, I found for that whole uh, almost two year span, all I could do during the day in order to be able to, you know, give my best at night for the paying audience. All I could do is stay at home, drink and drink water and exercise, sleep as much as humanly possible. And it was worth it because it was such, you know, it's such a great role and it's such a great musical and such a great part. So I was glad to do it. Back at the turn of the century, there was a uh, uh, Jesus Christ Superstar in New York, and Glenn Carter uh, played Jesus in that one, and I interviewed Glenn at the time, and he said, my role was tough, he said, but can't hold a candle to the level of energy that Judas has to put out, you know? And, That's uh, absolutely you're saying, true. Essentially, by living as a monk, you were a monk for those times when you're doing the part. Um, Josh, let's go back earlier in your life. Uh, most most parents don't mind if their kids get into acting as an avocation, uh, as a hobby, but but the idea that they're not going to have a steady job, they're not going to have a constant paycheck and a pension uh, is pretty scary to any parent. Your, your family of origin, were they very supportive of the notion of you going into the arts? They were. As soon as I think they realized, you know, I got great feedback from teachers and uh, I did I did community theater and classes, uh, youth theater, summer camps. As soon as, like... If you get enough good feedback, I think they start believing that this is a, was a viable profession for me. So I think once they had enough people mm-hmm. telling them that, they've started to believe it, and they were able to support me 100%. Also, I mean, my mother, if her mother would have been um, supportive, she would have wanted to do the same thing that I got to do. So I think she took that, you know, her growing up wanting to be a Broadway actress, the fact that her mother wasn't supportive, I think she didn't want to take that away from me as well. So I that opportunity has supported me in every way. Um, and I was able to do it, but you're absolutely right. It is, it is a difficult profession and you, you always have to be auditioning and being very sharp at the top of your game. And you have, you, even if, even then there's about a, in musical theater, there's a 2% employment rate. That means a 98% unemployment rate at any given time. So, uh, even if you're the, the absolute wow. best, there's chances that you're not working sometimes during the year. Uh, Josh Young, our guest today, is now himself a married man to Emily, and he's a dad of Adele. I mentioned that by way of going back again to your own your, parents. When you look back to your early life, Josh, what, what did uh-huh. they, your parents, what did they do right in raising you? What did they do right? <laughs> You're assuming that they did something right. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, no, I think they We're did. hoping. We're hoping. I, I think they did. Uh, what did they do right? Um, I think they just really instilled a, a sense of, right and wrong and um uh and and they really uh led by example on how to be a good person how to give charity and um in my house it was called sadaka which is hebrew for charity um and uh and just how to be a mensch how to be a good person um how to treat others the way you would want to be treated um and those are the most important values that i think uh my parents uh, instilled in me I'm happy to say that when I do interfaith marriages uh, with my rabbi friends, one of the rabbis I work the most with says, you don't know what this means, Lasanti, he said, but you are a classic mensch, and I found out it was a compliment, so I was happy about it. That's a big compliment. Good, I'm happy to be a mensch. Well, let me ask you something, especially in the indefinite career of the arts, um, is the decision to be married and to raise a family, is is that an act of faith? Uh, Is it an act of faith? I mean, I guess anything you do in life is an act of faith, considering you don't know what the outcome is ever really, truly going to be. Um, right, right, but, true. But I'm, yeah, for, for me, marriage and a family was something that I had always wanted, and then you find the right person, and, and then you want to just build your life together. I, I, don't know if, uh, I, I don't know if that's faith in God or just faith in the fact that, that you love that person and you believe that... Um, that you should be building that family, having those children uh, uh, together. And I'm happy to say that my wife and I have settled down and are having a great life in Michigan, of all places now. As we both were in New York City for 15 right. years. But we just uh, we just moved to Michigan. Well, uh, we are well in, uh, let, let's, Lake Orion. let's talk a little bit about that. that sure. How in the world did you end up in beautiful Michigan? Um, so I was uh, in between jobs. I had just actually worked in I was working in Jerusalem doing a show called uh, Soul Doctor the musical do you have you heard of that one it was on Broadway for a little while no, the story no. of, uh, it was the story of Shlomo Karlbach he was a famous rabbi in the 70s um, he was 
that okay. he was like a rock and roll rabbi, and it made it to Broadway, and I was doing a tour of it that went to Israel. So my wife and I, um, we were in Jerusalem, and then and we did that show, and it was a great experience, and I came back, and, and again, we were both auditioning. And then I, and I was also, at the same time, I was going everywhere doing concerts. Um, I was doing concerts all over the world, and I was also doing uh, there's this Broadway cruise ship that I was doing. And we also, with all this stuff going on, we also knew we wanted to have children. And as soon as my wife got pregnant, we realized we didn't want to be, we didn't want to have to be uh, going to New York City at night and not being able to put our baby to sleep and not knowing when our next job was. And right. I had always wanted to be a teacher. Um, and one of my professors at Syracuse University, uh, where that was where I graduated from, um, had posted that she was retiring and that they were looking for a replacement for her. Now, uh, so I did all the things I could. I, I uh, applied, I sent in a teaching statement and all, I jumped through tons of hoops only to find out that they were only interested in considering people with um, uh, master's degrees, which I do not have. So since I had already done all that work and I had all that material put together, I was, I, I said, well, maybe some other schools would consider me without a master's degree. And there are many uh, schools that are looking for people who have that equivalent experience, the people who've worked really hard in their area of study. So um, uh, this one university mm -hmm. called Oakland University, uh, they said uh, in their breakdown, what they were looking for for their professors, they said master's degree, degree or equivalent experience. So I felt I had equivalent experience, and ah. I proved that to them. And, uh, and we, my wife and I, we, we had had our child, and we were looking for a place, uh, we were looking for a community that had great schools and was known to be a great place to raise a family and uh, Rochester Hills where the university is has one of the best school districts in the country and it all just kind of fell into place and it feels right and we love it here and and we're certainly happy not to be in New York City right now considering I, I hear it's really right, tough right. With, with, our, with, with the virus and everything and and uh, the social distancing considering everybody is so close to each other no matter what so yeah we're thrilled it's, we're it's out here definitely in, uh, a frightening in time no um, yeah. I'm are, you in, are you in New York like you're getting to use uh, we are, yeah, and uh, it is yeah. a scary time and uh, uh, a time of great sadness because of the loss of life. And um, of but, you know, so it sounds like Josh, you've been able to combine uh, your, your life in the arts with the joy of marriage and and stability and good choices all around. You know, Josh, when every weekend usually I get a chance to do weddings for people and to prepare, I say, look, so I can give a decent homily, a sermon. Um, Greg, do me an essay of, of, of why, of all the people in the world, the billions out there, this one is the one you think you can build a life with. Uh, you probably were not asked to do that when you married Emily, but wh why is Emily the one for you? Uh, oh, she's sitting right next to me right now. Um, <laughs> you better get it right. <laughs> well, well I, I mean, she's my best friend. We are, since we've been together, we've been able to share everything together. Um, sometimes she doesn't like all the things that I share. Sometimes I don't like all the things that she shares. But we always are able to come to solutions, and and we have a great back and forth, and we both love each other's um, sense of humor, and we have the same goals, and you know we just kind of fit like like a puzzle piece, I guess you could say. Um, sometimes we have a hard time getting something together, but at the end of the day, we love each other, and we're just thrilled with our life that we're creating together. Yeah, I think that that's good. Any ideas why she would marry you? Why she would marry me, and why would you marry me? <laughs> she she can't. She, she's she's trying to she's trying to think of a reason. I think, but she's having a talk. She says because I'm her best friend. <laughs> I think she probably has lots of reasons. We'll do that with her in another interview. But now, Josh, getting back to uh, something I wondered about in terms of the acting career, when you've been as as busy as you have been, uh, concerts, but also especially your theater career. Um, Every actor I know says that there are some parts I am perfect for, should have gotten the role and didn't. Do you remember when you were so right for something and didn't get it? How does, how does Josh Young handle uh, uh, disappointment or rejection? Well, I think the most important thing, especially in this industry, when you're, you need to remember that when one door closes, another one tends to open. So as long as you're going into that audition room, and you're doing your absolute best work. There was one, do you remember, there was a, a little night music uh, was on Broadway, I don't know, what was it, maybe 10 years ago? Um, and I thought I, mm -hmm. I thought I was perfect for the role of Henrik. And I was devastated. I even learned to play cello just to play, just to, for the audition for Stephen Sondheim. So I, 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 so I worked so hard for that, and I didn't get it, and I was upset. But 
if I hadn't learned to play the cello for that role and I hadn't uh, impressed Stephen Sondheim and the casting directors, especially it was, uh, Tara, uh, it was Tara Rubin casting, if I hadn't impressed her with my work ethic and that audition, then she wouldn't have called me in uh, a couple months later for um, the Stratford Festival. She's the casting director, the American casting director for the Stratford Festival when they need an American. The Stratford Festival is an amazing theater festival in Canada. Uh, so that they were doing, they couldn't find a Canadian to play the role of Che in their part. They were doing a uh, Gary Griffin, uh, who, um, uh, is the director of the original color purple and many other great musicals. He was directing a revolutionary new production of, of Vita, uh, at the Stratford festival. And for some reason they couldn't find a Canadian to play the role of Che. So they called Tara Rubin, uh, the casting <laughs> director. And she said, well, I do know this guy who was great. He just came in for me for this audition for little night music. We didn't cast him in that. So they ended up casting me uh, as Che in that Avita production. And from that Avita production, the uh, Stratford Festival hired me back the next year to play Judas Iscariot and Jesus Christ Superstar. And that ended up being my Broadway debut. So, you know, it, it all came from an audition that I didn't get. So thank goodness I didn't get it. Right, Cause, right, right. Because playing the role, role no, everything of Judas worked. than playing the role of Henrik. I think so. I think so. Josh Young is our guest, a wonderful actor and singer and performer and, and professor at the moment. Um, Josh, I want to ask you, a few years ago we had Stephen Schwartz on the show, and, and I asked him, uh, you know, aside from Pippin and Wicked, oddly enough, one of the first things you ever wrote was Godspell about uh, the life of Jesus from the Gospels of Matthew. And I asked him why, as a secular Jewish man, he would write a musical about Jesus, and he said, you don't have to be Christian to know yeah. the world would be in much better shape if people actually live by the teachings of Jesus. I mentioned that because sure, I agree when you talked before about your Jewish upbringing. Yeah, it's, he had great insight, as you do, too, but I'm wondering, yeah. when, when you were raised, was, was the Jewishness of your upbringing more cultural or religious or spiritual? It was, well, it was very much cultural. Um, my parents mm -hmm. would have preferred that I was, was that I went to, uh, services and was more observant. Uh, they, tr they, I did come in, I did, was raised in a house where they kept kosher and they tried to instill those beliefs in me, but I, I, the exact, so uh, they tried to raise me conservative, uh, conservative Judaism. And that was a little too strict for me. And, uh, mm -hmm. more recently I've, I've come around to the reform uh, faction of, of Judaism, which I find that there's a lot more music in it. Um, there's in, in right. conservative Judaism, a lot of times in services, it's all um, the cantor sings and there's no accompaniment. And, and, and a lot of reform synagogues, they have guitars and pianos and it's, uh, and it's more my speed. So recently I've, I've found that and I'm loving that. Um, but growing up, my, my, even though my parents tried to uh, instill a uh, conservative belief. Um, it's not the way I ended up. Yeah, that's very honest, and I think that represents not just people who are Jewish, but Christians and all sorts of people that we sometimes go in a different direction from our parents, and we find our own spiritual root, which is beautiful. Well, now, you two have this magnificently beautiful young daughter named Adele, and I know she's way yeah. too young to ask this question, but do you have any idea, any idea at all how you're supposed to pass on ethical, human, uh, good solid values to this baby that you love? Um, I, I can only look at the way my parents raised me and try to do uh, nearly as well as they do. I, I think I had a really fantastic uh, mother and father and, and I just, I need to just try to follow in their footsteps. I know my wife was also raised really well by her parents. And I think that's just the way it is. Generation to generation, probably for thousands of years, you, you're, you try to strive to be as good as your parents, hopefully if they were good parents. And luckily both of us had great parents. I think, so I think all we can do is what, let her watch us be the good people that we try to be and do the good things that we try to do and try to lead by example. And that's what we try to do for her. She's right now she's 14 months old. Um, and she seems oh, pretty great, great so far. So hopefully it, it stays that way. Yeah. <laughs> And, and Josh, were you there to give Emily moral support for the birth? I sure was. I was absolutely there for the whole thing, and it was it was a little bit of a traumatic birth, but we came through it okay. We were at the end. we were at, ended up having to be at the NICU for a little while, but um, everything ended up great. Um, I hear right now that in hospitals, the husband is not allowed into the room because of the rules of, because of COVID 
which has got to be really yeah, rough. Yeah, at the on, moment, on, that's on, the on truth. Days. Yeah. So we're hoping, you, you know, watch when it we... By, uh... Sorry, you're saying? No, no, no. The, uh, uh, some guys are seeing their babies be born on screen, but they can't be there for the actual birth, yeah. which you're right, is tough. But yeah. you got to be yeah. there. You got to be there yeah, for Adele, which is wonderful. And also important to be there for, for Emily. Yeah. Yeah. It was a beautiful thing. Uh, Josh Young, I want to ask you another question about acting, which intrigues me. We live in this culture where uh, looks and youth are glorified. Um, uh-huh. When you've been involved in acting and singing, does the process of aging intimidate you, or do you invite it? Oh, well, hmm. I- I've always been somebody who's played roles younger than myself. Possibly it's from a youthful appearance. Also, it's because I'm not very tall, so they always want to cast me as somebody who's younger than I am. Um, I mean, mm-hmm. the, the main thing about aging I have found is when I was younger playing roles, I threw myself into the roles so much that as I got older, I feel like my, my jo- I've hurt my joints because I, and, and I can feel it now, even though I, I threw myself into it so hard in my 20s and early 30s, I wasn't really feeling it until I got to my late 30s that maybe I shouldn't have given my, like my 150%, maybe in Jesus Christ Superstar, I shouldn't have every night jumped off a second story platform. You know, maybe I could have taken the stairs and stuff. Right. But um, <laughs> that, that's the, the main thing is just the physical toll that um, my, my overambitious work ethic uh, has, has, has laid, uh, the physical toll from that. I, when it comes to like appearance, I kind of invite it because I, I want to start playing older, more character roles. Right now, I'm really only uh, yeah. concerned about raising my family and, and uh, teaching. But, you know, eventually I'd like to take a sabbatical mm-hmm. and, and, and hopefully, you know, not, not the, if, if uh, Les Miserables came back to Broadway, I would love to try to get in there for Jean Valjean. And, um, but, but, but I wouldn't right. be able to do that unless I looked a little bit older. And that's the role I want to play now. So I invite it. Josh Young, are you still doing your concerts? I am. Uh, well, <laughs> I have had 10 canceled because of, of what's going on now. Um, or right. postponed. Postponed. We've had several great... We were supposed to be... Uh, we were supposed to sing with the Toronto Symphony Orchestra last week, and that was postponed. Uh, we were supposed to sing with a couple other orchestras, and uh, we had a co- We actually had a... Um, we were going to be doing... And what's the theater in, in Long Island? The Engelman, Engelman, Engelman Theater in uh, Long Island. Yeah, sure. There. Um, that was actually I don't even that might not have been canceled yet. It's probably going to be canceled. And we had a couple other ones uh, in upstate New York. What was it? Saratoga Springs was just postponed. So unfortunately, yeah, everything's being postponed. But we are still trying because <laughs> we love that, and that's that's one way to kind of scratch that creative itch that we have that we get to do these concerts and we get to do them together. Right, right. To continue to use that, to use that gift of your voice and to use it in a creative way. Do you right. have any sense? And this is such an impossible question to answer, but do you have any sense of uh, when people might start coming back to theater and to concert halls again? Uh, well, I hear there's uh, um, there are some uh, theaters that are trying, like this very week, to to reopen, um, but to like reduce the capacity to twenty percent so that there's at least six mm-hmm. feet in each direction. So it's going to be a, so maybe, you know, they're going to start that way soon where you have a, a theater meant for um, a thousand people and you end up putting in 200 people. Um, and, you know, that might just barely covering cover operating costs. Uh, hopefully they'll start doing that yeah. with, um, hopefully they'll start doing that with concerts as well pretty soon. But I don't think things are going to get back to normal until there's a, uh, a vaccine. For um, for what's going on until people because the the tough thing is in theater you're it's a it's a ton of people squeezed into a small space and that's the recipe for disaster with um, with any kind of right. uh, airborne yeah. airborne virus so you know I, I feel bad for all of my friends who are actors right now they have no idea when their next job's going to be um, I feel very fortunate to be where I, where I am but also I I miss doing what I love to do so. I'm just hoping that this all ends soon and everybody can go back to what they were doing before. I was in New York uh, attending a showing of the new the new production of 
Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, and I turned out to be uh-huh. at the last performance because the next day oh. theaters were closed down, and it was scary to see that, you know, we, we all had a great time, it was a great play, but that that kind of chance for enjoying theater might not come for a while. We are here talking to the actor, singer, performer, teacher, Josh Young, wonderful talent. Josh, I promise I'm wrapping it, but I, our last guest in the studio before we had to close down actually doing interviews in the studio was the actor Reeve Carney, who was starring in uh, Hadestown, Hadestown. And uh, he said that part of, he, part of his job is not only to do what he does on stage, but also that he spends endless time at stage door seeing people who have come to see him personally. How do you, yeah. how do you handle, how did you handle, how do you continue to handle that, that, that very sensitive line between what I offer on stage well, versus yeah. how much do I have to give to? It's a really good question. And the truth of the matter is, at the end of the day, we are hired to perform for those uh, two to three hours. Um, the stage door, I yeah. really feel anything at the stage door is extra. And some people have the stamina to go and do that. But often, depending on the role you're doing, you need to, after the show, you got to go home and rest. And you can't talk to people over, you know, people are very loud there. And you're, by, by talking, um, by talking over all those people in a crowd waiting for an autograph, you're shortchanging the next night's audience because they're not going to be able to get 100% of you because you gave more at the stage door afterwards. So I strongly feel that it's great those people who can do that uh and sometimes some nights you feel great afterwards and if the role if you're doing a role that does not take everything out of you great say hi to the people who who do pay to see you but they're not paying for a stage door experience afterwards and i think sometimes people get really upset when their favorite people are not at the stage door but i do think they need to know that what they're paying for is our performance and not our stage door performance I want to thank Josh Young for being with us. I hope our listeners will both go to see him in concert when our concert halls open again. See him in theater because he's a terrific actor as well as singer. And uh, and Josh, thank you for talking to us today. Thank you for uh, uh, finding great things to say about Emily. Keep that up and enjoy the great gift of Adele's life. And we hope to see you on stage and performing very, very soon again. Josh Young, thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye. As we end today's program, I want to thank you all for being with us. If you'd like to listen to this show or other shows, you can go to our Personally Speaking podcast. They have other recent shows as well. You can go to that on YouTube by searching for Personally Speaking with Monsignor Jim Losanti and subscribe. Personally Speaking is also available as a podcast on Apple Podcasts, iHeart, and Spotify. You can also listen to past episodes by going on to www.CloseEncounterTV.com. All one word, CloseEncounterTV.com and clicking on the radio button at the top of the page. I'm privileged to serve as host and executive producer, personally speaking. Our producer is Lisa Jandovitz. Our engineer is Chris Wallach. And our audio facility is Dream Recording Studios in Belmore, Long Island, New York. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll be with you again next time on Personally Speaking.